Hello, dears. I've just recently landed a new job as a senior data engineer at TripAdvisor, and I've entered tons of data engineering interviews. While this is fresh in my mind, let me share with you the most common data engineering questions I had, plus questions from my fellow senior data engineers. What do they ask at the interviews? All the questions, answers, and links are linked below and can be found on my website, nataindata.com. By the way, you can also find job board for data specialists there. Data engineering interview structure. In general, it consists of an intro where you tell about yourself, outlining past projects and technologies you used, then listen about what the company is doing, their stack, etc. The next part typically consists of data engineering theoretical questions, which I'm going to share in the next chapter. After that, you can jump on some live coding steps like SQL or Python. Data engineering interview questions. Okay, let's go to the real questions you might stumble on. I've divided those into categories and marked with basic or intermediate tag, data modeling. Data lake versus data mart. Data lake is a more extensive and flexible data repository that can store raw, unstructured, or structured data at a relatively low cost. Data mart is a part of data warehouse architecture, a structured subset of the data for specific analytical needs. What is a dimension? In a data warehouse, dimensions are often associated with fact tables, which contain the quantitative data of interest. They provide the who, what, where, when, and how context surrounding a business event. What are slowly changing dimensions? It's relatively static data, which can change slowly but unpredictably. Examples are names of geographical locations, customers, or products. What are slowly changing dimension techniques? Name a few. Type 0, retain original, type 1, overwrite, type 2, add new raw, etc. How to define a fact table granularity? Granularity means the lowest label of information that will be stored in a fact table. You need to understand business requirements, identify dimensions, understand the hierarchies, so the grain provides the necessary level of insight. Explain star schema versus 3NF versus data vault versus one big table. Star schema. Schema where a central fact table is surrounded by dimension tables, pretty simple to understand and query. 3NF serves normal form all about data normalization in order to eliminate redundancy. Tables are normalized and may involve more complex joins, potentially impacting query performance. Data Vault consists of hub, link, and satellite tables to capture historical data changes. Scalable and flexible for handling changing business requirements and skin change. One big table, a denormalized approach consolidating all data into a single table, has minimal use of joins, can provide quick query performance, reduce the amount of shuffling. Simple structure, but can lead to data redundancy and issues with data quality. Typical use case here, if data volume grows and common joins are more than 10 gigabytes. Explain normalization versus denormalization. Normalization data modeling technique to reduce data redundancy by decomposing large tables into smaller related tables to eliminate data duplication has various normalization forms like 1NF, 2NF, 3NF. Denormalization inverse process of normalization to improve query performance by reducing the number of joins needed to retrieve data. Allow faster query execution, but tables may contain duplicated data to minimize joins. Database. Explain structured versus semi-structured versus unstructured data. Structured data is organized in a specific format, typically stored in databases or other tabular formats, and follows a schema. Semi-structured data it is information that doesn't reside in relational database, but has some organizational properties that make it easier to analyze. For example, XML data. Unstructured data lacks a predefined data model or structure based on character and binary data. Example, audio, video files, PDF, text, etc. Define OLTP and OLAP. What are the difference? What are their main purposes? OLTP, online transactional processing system, handles large number of small online transactions, focuses on insert, update, delete operations. It is write optimized and transactions are short and ACID compliant. OLAP, online analytical processing system, meant for data analysis, focuses on complex queries with aggregations, is read optimized. Explain ETL versus ELT. I've covered it in my Insta post. ETL process of extraction of data from source systems, then doing some transformations, and finally loading the data into a data warehouse. ELT, with separation of storage in compute, it became economical to store data and then transform it as required. All data is immediately loaded into the target system. Only then data is transformed in the target system to be analyzed by data analytics tools. Explain ACID versus BASE. ACID principle is typically associated with traditional relational database management systems where data consistency and integrity are highly important. BASE is often linked to NoSQL databases and distributed systems where high availability and partition tolerance are prioritized and strong consistency may be relaxed in favor of availability and partition tolerance. What is CDC? Change Data Capture. 
It is a set of techniques used in databases to capture changes made to the data. The primary purpose of CDC is to track changes in the source data so that downstream systems can be kept in sync with the latest updates. Methods. Put timestamps on rows, version numbers on rows, status indicators, etc. What is an index? A database index is a data structure that provides a quick lookup of data in a column or columns of a table. Indexes are typically created on one or more columns and contain a copy of the data in the index columns along with a pointer to the corresponding row in the table. When a search query is executed, the DBMS can use the index to quickly identify the rows that are relevant much quicker. Explain the complexity of index operations. Insertion and deletion. When a new record is inserted, deleted into a database with indexes, the database needs to update the index to include the new data. The complexity of this operation depends on the type of index and the data view system, but typically it's O log n or O1. However, in some cases, if the index structure needs to be rebalanced or modified, it can approach O n complexity. Lookup. Searching for a specific record based on an index column is typically very efficient with a complexity of O log n in the case of B3 and balanced tree indexes and O1 for hash indexes. This means that the time it takes to find a specific record doesn't increase linearly with the size of the table. Python. Name immutable and mutable data types. Immutable objects are usually hashable, meaning they have a fixed hash value. These are tuples, strings, integers, floats, booleans, frozen sets, named tuples, bytes. And mutable data types are lists, dictionaries, sets, byte arrays. Which Python data structures do you know? Python provides several built-in data structures. Lists, tuples, sets, dictionaries, strings, arrays, queues, stacks. SQL. What is SQL execution order? There are a couple of steps. I've stated it in one of my videos. You can have a look. What is the primary key? The primary key constraint uniquely identifies each row in a table. It must contain unique values and has implicit not null constraint. Difference between truncate, delete, and drop statements. Delete statement is used to delete particular rows from a table. Truncate is used to delete all the rows from the table and free the space containing the table. Drop command is used to remove an object from the database. If you drop a table, all the rows in the table are deleted and the table structure is removed from the database. What is a common table expression? CTE is a named temporary result set which is used to deal with complex subqueries data. It exists in the scope of a statement, and you cannot create an index on CTE. List the different types of relationships in SQL. One to one, where each record in one table is associated with the maximum of one record in the other table. One to many and many to one, a record in a table is associated with multiple records in the other table. Many to many, where each record in the first entity can be associated with multiple records in the second entity, and vice versa. Self-referencing relationship. This is used when a table needs to define a relationship with itself. Airflow. What are the components used by Airflow? A web server used for tracking the status of the jobs and reading logs from the remote file store. Scheduler used for scheduling jobs and its multi-threaded Python process. Executor used for getting the tasks done. Metadata database used for storing the Airflow states. What are the types of executors in Airflow? Local executor helps in running multiple tasks at one time. Sequential executor helps by running only one task at a time. Salary executor helps by running distributed asynchronous Python tasks. Kubernetes executor helps in running tasks in individual Kubernetes pod. What are XCOMs in Airflow? XCOM, short of cross-communication, are messages that allow data to be sent between tasks. The key, value, timestamp, and task DAG ID are all defined. Infrastructure. What is CI-CD? CI-CD, or Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery, is a set of software development practices that automate the integration, testing, and delivering of code changes. It involves regularly merging code changes from multiple contributors, Git, automatically building and testing the software and delivering it to various environments. Terraform. Explain main CLI commands. Init. Prepare your working directory for other commands. Validate. Check whether the configuration is valid. Plan. Show changes required by the current configuration. Apply. Create or update infrastructure. Destroy. Destroy previously created infrastructure. Spark. What is Apache Spark and how does it differ from Hadoop MapReduce? Explain briefly. Apache Spark is an open-source distributed computing system providing fast in-memory data processing. Spark is faster, more versatile, and developer-friendly compared to MapReduce offering in-memory processing and a broader range of libraries. Spark performs in-memory processing, reducing disk I.O. and speeding up tasks. MapReduce reads and writes to disk, making it slower for iterative algorithms. Explain the core components of Apache Spark. Driver program. Initiates Spark application, defines execution plan. Spark context. Coordinates tasks, manages resources, communicates with cluster manager. 
Cluster Manager allocates resources, manages nodes in the Spark cluster. Cluster Manager allocates resources, manages nodes in the Spark cluster. Executor processes work on cluster nodes, execute tasks, store data. Task unit of work sent to executor for execution. RDD, resilient distributed data set, immutable distributed collection of objects processed in parallel. Spark Core Foundation providing task scheduling, memory management, fault recovery. Cloud. What is distributed compute? Distributed computing refers to the use of multiple computer systems, nodes, or processors to work collaboratively on a task. Instead of relying on a single powerful machine, distributed computing uses the combined processing resources of multiple interconnected devices. Distributed computing allows a task to be divided into smaller subtasks that can be processed simultaneously by different nodes. If one node in a distributed system fails, the other can continue working. Distributed systems can be easily scaled, scaled up or scale out. This makes it possible to handle larger workloads or more extensive datasets. Distributed compute was evolving from SMP to MPP to EPP. Describe some best practices to reduce costs when making queries in Cloud Data Warehouse. Here are many options available, but let's outline a couple of them. Don't use select star, aggregate data when appropriate use aggregates to pre-calculate results and reduce the amount of computation needed, filter by partition column, filter by cluster column, Use preview, instead select uh, when you want to analyze table contents. Implement data retention policies to automatically archive or delete data that is no longer needed. In some cases, denormalize tables or use materialized views to store pre-computed results. Select the appropriate instance types based on your workload, etc. So here are 30 data engineering interview questions. If you want to hear more questions on data structures or algorithms, post your comments below and I might take it into my backlog. Until then, stay curious.